A common mindset trap that new business owners fall into is believing that they have to resort to complicated sales and marketing tactics to get clients, like posting on social media three times a day, seven days a week, or simply relying on the internet's algorithm to be visible in their business. Now, things like social media and ads can certainly grow your business, but it really isn't the only way, and at times not the simplest way to get to your first clients. The truth is, if you are building a service-based business, you need to start being of service to your people, not hiding behind your laptop and just hoping for clients to find you. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how to gain clients through authentic marketing, even if you're just starting out and you have a small list or an audience. I'm Lydia Lee, I'm the work reinvention coach and solopreneur strategist at Screw the Cubicle. And this channel is really my baby that's really dedicated to helping you build a business that you love designed from your genius zone, which is your strengths, your values, and your personality type, so that you are actually building a meaningful business that feels like you. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the notification bell button so that you will be the first to know when every new video drops on this channel every single month. Now, before we jump into the tips and the strategies I share today, I just want to talk a little bit about what marketing can be and what marketing can be redefined as so that we can be more human focused and authentic in how we treat our customers and not be that sleazy, scammy online business owner that everybody hates, right? Hopefully you're not here for that. Um, and so to me, I really look at marketing as a form of education. So thinking about marketing, think about how are you educating people to learn more about what you can help them do. Think about how often you are planting seeds to help them get prepared and ready to work with someone like you. And when the time is right, you are top of mind as the specialist, as the expert they come to. And lastly, how often are you having real conversations with humans that you're really passionate to help and not treating them as just like a number on your list or a follower in your channel. And I think when you start to see what that looks like for you and how you wanna approach connecting, building a genuine relationship with your customers, then you can start to really decide consciously on the marketing activities that are aligned with your beliefs, with your values, with who you are, um, and that makes sure that you don't fall into the trap of just taking on any tactics out there that just doesn't sit well with you because you're just not gonna commit to it if you don't do something that feels right and good to you. Let's get on to tip number one. If you have a small list or an audience, don't panic. Use intimacy marketing to connect with them in a deeper way than other people with a big list may not be able to do. Now, the beautiful gift of a small list is that you are able to pay attention to your subscribers. You're able to pay attention to your new followers of your social media channels or however you are gathering an audience for your business. And one of the great things that you can be doing because you have a small list is to connect with each individual person and start creating a conversation uh, about asking them about their problems, talk to them about why they're following you, what they're most interested to learn, and really gather some market research for further content or simply to just help generously so that these individual people get to know what you do and what you're all about. Now, one of my favorite ways to um, welcome new subscribers to my email list or my newsletter, for example, uh, is whenever I get a notification, which you can set up, by the way, on your email software, whatever you use, to send you an email, right, whenever a subscriber subscribes and you can do this in the beginning because you're not going to get a whole crap load of people so you can manage it properly um, is shoot a quick loom video i've talked about loom before in past videos as one of the most um, uh, valuable intimacy marketing tools that i use which is basically um, a tool that you can use to screen share and or uh, be on camera and just say hello to someone say tell, thank them for being a part of your newsletter ask them about their business, ask them about their life or about the problem that your business solves and what they came uh, to learn, right? Connect with your clients and you're gonna be able to find out so much more about how you can help them. And when you know that information, 
and it feels like a good client that you could potentially be pitching your services to, don't just stri- go straight for the jugular. Um, invite them on a conversation. Invite them on a Zoom coffee date, whatever you want to call it, a discovery call, right? It's a great way to get to know your clients. You have the time for it right now when you have a small audience. And I guarantee you, you're going to get so much more momentum in making sure that people are enrolled into what you do and how you do it through better conversations instead of just relying on social media posts to sell your services. As I said, service-based business owners are all about people and being of service to each other. And so having something like a real conversation or creating a Loom video to say hello and introduce yourself is a really, really great way to personalize the interaction. And bonus, it sets you apart from everyone else in the marketplace that might not be doing that at all. And here is one quick bonus tip for connecting with an audience when you have a small list or a following. If you don't have an email list, and let's say you started your Instagram channel or your LinkedIn profile, that's a really great way to use intimacy marketing also. So one of my favorite things to do today, even eight years in running a business, uh, is at times, you know, maybe a couple times a week, I'll block off like 15 minutes, 20 minutes each time to go on my Instagram channel and look at my new subscribers, who they are, and direct message them and send them a voicemail. A lot of people don't know there's a voicemail function on LinkedIn and on Instagram, and it is one of the most surprising ways to delight your new subscribers or new followers. And it gives a bit of a human touch, uh, and no one else is usually doing it. And so when they get to hear your voice, they get to see a genuine connection with you, you're going to be able to stand out. And also it's going to start a really lovely conversation about how you can help them. Okay. Tip number two, use creative ways to show and tell your work to gain credibility and trust as a new brand and a new business. Not everyone knows what you do and they don't know if they can trust you yet (laughs) in having a reputation uh, that they can be choosing as the right person to help them with the problems they have. So you need to be out there being visible in sharing your work as often as possible and not just waiting for clients to inquire about your services before you start to generously show and give value before they even um, consider you as a potential candidate for a service provider. If you are someone like a coach, for example, and one of your best ways of influencing people and just showing people your chops and seeing how you can ask great questions to a potential client, you could be asking people to be case studies and going on things like an IG live or a live stream on Facebook, or just film a video on zoom and broadcast it to your email list or whoever it is that you have, uh, whoever's on your personal Facebook, even just friends and family, whatever you are doing to start as a way to show right? What you can be coaching people on and how you're really helping people solve the problems that they are potentially looking to pay you to do. So if having a candidate, a person, right, where you can interview, do a case study with, um, coach live or recorded, that is a beautiful way to show and tell what you do. And it's going to allow your clients to really see your approach, see the way that you uh, think about coaching and what are the tools that you use to get them there. So that if that's aligned with their values too, it's really, really clear that you would be the coach for them. And let's say if you're an educator, you're someone that creates courses or workshops, or you'd like teaching one to many, um, a great way to show and tell your work is to train, to actually teach a subject. So whether you do things like a webinar or again, a live stream, right? Or film a video on YouTube and just break down, chunk down complicated concepts for them on one mini little topic as a mini workshop for them to come and watch you. Uh, that is also a great way to show and tell your work. If you're someone that is an implementer, let's say you are a designer, uh, you are someone that does copywriting for others. Why don't do something like an audit? You know, why don't you offer to do an audit for a business that you actually really respect and may be a potential client and take a look at their website, give them a five to 10 minute loom video or a screencast and share with them 
from fresh pair of eyes, from your expertise, what could help them achieve some of their goals a little bit more effectively with the user experience of their website. Or you could also ask people to submit, for example, a, um, a page for their about page if you're a copywriter or a chapter of their book if you're a book editor um, and do a live edit, you know, where you record yourself uh, doing all the changes, editing, giving, you know, giving your tips and strategies of what you would really usually do with a paid client, but in a little mini version. Uh, and it allows people to just be kind of a fly in the wall and witness your process. And when people can see how you do what you do, that is when you build trust and credibility with new potential leads. And here is my final most important tip of the day. Choose the marketing activities that align best with who you are. If you don't know what that feels like, you probably just have to look in the way you behave and interact and connect with regular humans in your real life. How do you best influence in your regular day to day at the moment? So if you are someone that is more of a conversationalist, very likely the way that you're going to market, how you're going to invite people to learn more about your services is through conversation. Just do that <laughs> and you will never be away from your own genius zone. Be generous and most of your clients that need you and are looking for someone like you can easily find you from you consistently doing these activities and planting these seeds uh, as a way of attracting awesome soulmate clients to your business. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you got some very useful tips that you can execute and implement right away because execution is the name of the game. I want you to go forth and use one of the strategies that I talked about today and then share it with me in the comments below. What is one tip from today's video you would love to try out in your business? And what are you most excited to get back when you try out this particular strategy? Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you in the next video.